Wait, wait, wait. Is that one bridge? Or the guy went just glue two slippers together? So the city and county of Honolulu recently released the designs they have for the planned Alawai pedestrian bridge that goes straight across the Alawai Canal. It will connect Makali with Waikiki because why not? And while the time for feedback is over, I wanted to share what I thought were the three worst designs, three of my favorites, as well as highlight some of the community submissions. Because frankly, those ones are the best ones. And if you haven't seen any of the designs in the report, I have a link below so you can go and check out all 30 designs. But let's start off with the three worst designs in my opinion. Bridge design number 11. Now it seems like a great idea, but it just looks horrible. I mean, I understand wanting to have some kind of wall or divider so that people know that they can go on either side or even separating the pedestrians from the bikers. But does the wall have to be so thick? And does the wall have to be so high? I mean, it's great to think about having shade on this walkway, but you can imagine how it's gonna be on your typical sunny day. What everyone's gonna do is they're just all gonna walk on the side with the shade and you're gonna have just everybody on half the walkway. And can you imagine stuff being thrown over the wall? I know we don't wanna think about those things, but it could happen and I think that we should at least consider that. I imagine you walking around and all of a sudden some guy just throws a canned juice at you and out of nowhere it lands, hits you and it spills all over your, your shirt, your pants, on top of your feet. And you know how sticky that Hawaiian sun juice can be. But the thing is, because the wall is so high and it's the whole length of the walkway, you're never gonna know who that was. I mean, what you gonna do? You gonna yell over the wall, hey, who that? And on top of that, with those nice clean, white, wide walls, you're just asking for graffiti. And also anytime you get walls like that, you gotta consider there might be some homeless people who use that to camp up against. I understand the design of wanting to split right down the middle, but if you're gonna do that, maybe a thinner wall, a lower wall, maybe even just have railings in between, but not this design. Another one is bridge design number eight. I just don't get it. Maybe it's just me, I look at it, I just don't quite understand. Couple of fatal flaws for me on, on this design. The curve just seems a, a little strange to have. Um, maybe it's just aesthetically it's pleasing, but the curve, the angle of the curve just doesn't look good to me from the side. And the way that the arches are designed, they're very thick and also they're very accessible from the ends of the bridges. And what I think is gonna end up happening is guys gonna climb up there, they're either gonna walk across or even worse, they're gonna try bike across on top of that arch because it looks pretty wide. And guarantee you will get guys that are gonna go all the way to the middle and then just jump right off. And the second thing about this design that I don't quite understand is that the side railings are so low. Like if you look at them, they're like, I don't know, like maybe a foot at the most. While I understand it's more accessible, like, oh, you can go like, you know, look over. But the fact is you gotta put railings on this. like. If that's how low the railings were, I couldn't take my kids because I'd be too afraid that they're gonna look and they're gonna try, you know, reach or they're gonna, you know, throw stuff or, you know, all this stuff. And I just don't wanna have to worry about that. And bridge design number 17. This is like one of the busiest designs. I don't know, were they getting paid by the number of cross sections they could add because this one is super complicated. It almost seems like they designed it with one of those video games where you gotta design your bridge and then the truck tries to go across and you gotta see if your bridge is strong enough. That's what this design seems like because it's so many cross points and cross sections. I mean, I know you want to be safe, but you know, it's not like a train's going to be going across this bridge. It's only going to be people. So I got to ask, do any of these cross sections help with the integrity of the bridge, knowing that the sacrifice will be that no one will be able to look either direction because it's like they have double railings. There's the railings and then there's the other side railings and you're not gonna be able to see nothing. And now for my favorite bridge designs. Bridge design number one. Now this one is my favorite design. Not because it's symmetrical, but actually because it's interesting because it's asymmetrical. Like it's so leaned off and extreme to one end that ah, I kind of like it. It resembles a sail and you got all those little poles. 
not sure if that's for integrity or just for the looks, but I appreciate that. It makes it very interesting. And you can imagine, you go to the opposite side of the bridge and you got all these poles that are angled this way, and behind you, you can see this beautiful, beautiful like meeting point, right? You got all these lines leading up, boom, into like the center point. You can take all the Instagram pictures you like. Now I do worry about the maintenance of this bridge design. I'm not sure if those long poles are for integrity or just for the looks, but it's gonna be hard to clean. I also like the railings on this one because they happen to have that open gated design, which means you can look through, but you don't have to worry about falling over. And the thing with this bridge design is they could make it an iconic piece in Waikiki. I mean, let's face it, there's not too many new things that we've had since probably the 1970s or 1980s but this could be one of them right like this could be an iconic piece in Waikiki where thousands of tourists and locals come and they want to take a picture on on this bridge all you gotta do is just write up an interesting story interesting background you know have some meaning behind it and just sell that to the tourists they're gonna like it now bridge design number two now this is the most minimalistic design this is probably what we should do because it seems to be the simplest and the easiest and it just gets the job done. I mean, if you want the boringest bridge to go over the Alawai, this is the design. I mean, this is like the chicken katsu plate lunch of bridge designs. The Toyota Corollas of bridge designs. The Glen Miyashiros of bridge designs. And because it's so simple, it'll probably be the easiest one to maintain. And the last one I really like is bridge design number nine. I don't know what it is about these curves, but I do like the look of the curve from the side and the fact that the pillars are so thin, it doesn't obstruct from views. But the most interesting feature about this bridge versus I think every other bridge design was actually at the end over Alawai Boulevard because the way that it's designed is there's actually a continued like stretch of the bridge that goes over Alawai Boulevard, which I think is a great idea, at least something to consider if other designs can do this. Because imagine you are walking from Makali, why you would do that, I'm not sure, but you walk in from Makali and you're going into Waikiki. You gotta go down and then you're gonna be stuck trying to cross over Alawai Boulevard. Get plenty of traffic, get buses. I mean, it's pretty crowded. But there's basically now an extension of this bridge that acts almost like a pedestrian bridge over that street and then you can go straight down or however they're gonna wind it down to get to street level. I think that's really smart because I'd rather see people using that bridge to get down to street level than trying to jaywalk and dodge all the cars and bikes off Alawai Boulevard. So those were the professionally designed bridges and nice drawings, but actually it's the community submission ones that I find the most pleasure in looking at. Because although the designs are pretty crudely drawn, if you look a little bit deeper, there's actually some gems in there that I think we should consider. So bridge design number 20. Now, not really much to look at here. It's a little narrow for probably what they're looking for. But in the picture, you can see there are pillars below the bridge. And none of the designs that I saw had pillars going into the Alawai Canal. And, and so it, it makes me question whether we need that. I'm not a bridge designer or architect. I have no idea how all that stuff works. But when I look at the McCulley Bridge, they do have pillars. Now granted, that's also for a lot of cars and, and other things, but the path for the Alawai Pedestrian Bridge seems to be a little bit longer. And so I question, well, is it gonna be able to hold the weight without any pillars in the water? Now, bridge design number 21 may be hard to kind of understand. I have to kind of like look at it and figure out what, what is going on. It looks, look, looks like this with a little thing on the bottom. But what I got out of this bridge idea was having two tiers of, of walkways. The top one can be for the people and then the bottom one can be for the bikes or those who are in wheelchairs. I mean, it kind of reminds me of like the stacked highways they have in Portland where instead of having two highways that go next to each other like we have here, they actually in some parts, they stack one highway and the same highway is right below it, but they're going in opposite directions. And you can imagine it's gonna be nice on that bottom one because it's gonna have all the shade from the top one. But I do question the pedestrian design of this. It looks like almost like it got stairs. I mean, you can imagine you gotta go up the stairs and then down the stairs, up the stairs and down. I don't get tired. Now bridge design number 28, the zigzag bridge. Whew, bruh, this one I was like, what? 
What's that? Now we'll give them some credit. They cited section 5-7.5 of the Hawaii Revised Statutes, which actually talks about the Aloha spirit, not quite related to the bridge design, but you know, there's good try, there's good try. And while I do think it would be pretty difficult to make a zigzag bridge, I do think that there should be some consideration on speed deterrence for especially those who'll be riding bikes. Because if this is like one straight long shot, guys gonna be ripping on the e-bikes and we already got problems with that. Now, I don't think we need the zigzag to slow people down, but maybe some kind of speed bump or, or something just to make sure that people don't go fast. And bridge design number 30. You gotta give this, th this person credit. I mean, it was a lot of creativity. I mean, they didn't just stick to Japanese slippers together and call it a bridge. And I do like the fact that it is cultural and it has that somewhat braided look. But I'm thinking if Hawaii is gonna design a bridge that looks like two slippers, gotta look like the local kind slippers, right? Now I know obviously we can't do that, but I think it would be pretty interesting. Now it should be very interesting to see how this project ends up. I mean, you know with the city, right? It's supposed to be on time and on budget at $63 million, even though a lot of it should be covered by federal funds. Whoever lands this contract is gonna be pretty happy. But I think we need to ask the fundamental question. Do we want this bridge just to be functional or do we want it to be iconic? Because if we just want it to be functional, just keep it simple, easy to maintain, and cheap. And by cheap, I don't mean like bad construction. I just mean just no any fancy stuff. But if we want a chance to make this iconic, I think we should really consider making the bridge interesting to look at. And although I don't have any designs to offer, I do have some things I'd like to bring up. The first is the width of the bridge. I think whatever the design width is gonna be, just make it a third bigger. Because you never know, it might have more people, but also there might be different modes of transportation in the future that decide to grow across this bridge. And we gotta think about maintenance and cleaning of this bridge. Gonna have trash cans on top or no trash cans? What's gonna happen with all of the graffiti? And eventually, I'm pretty sure homeless will be moving onto this bridge. So what's gonna happen with them? And also, I think a very important consideration should be lighting. Can I just have no lights on this whole bridge, especially if people are gonna be using it at nighttime? You should also think about fishing. Are we gonna let people fish off this bridge? I don't know why, I wouldn't eat anything in the alawai, but some people might wanna fish. And will people be allowed to jump off the bridge? Because you know, they are gonna try. Thanks for watching and aloha. Hello.